Morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 125 in the book of Genesis. We're in Genesis chapter 30. Turn your, in your Bibles there. So yesterday we looked at a, a woman named Rachel and she couldn't have any children. So she gave to Jacob, Billa, her servant as a wife, to have children. So she gets Dan and Naphtali out of that. Leah, her sister, cannot have children today and a even a crazier story happens. So she also gives Jacob, her husband, her servant Zilpah in a similar way. And she bears two children, Gad, which means good fortune, and uh, Asher, which means happy. So the story today starts with Reuben, the son of Leah, giving a herb, a mandrake, to his mother. And that mandrake is a Mediterranean herb believed to have aphrodisiac properties. It's called the it's called locally the love fruit. So that's how the story starts. So Reuben gives it to his mother Leah, and then Reuben leaves the story. So here we go. This is Genesis chapter thirty, verse nine. When Leah saw that she had ceased bearing children, she took her servant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Then Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a son, and Leah said, Good fortune has come, so she called his name Gad. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son, and Leah said, Happy am I, for women have called me happy. And so she named his name Asher. All right, now we get to the mandrake story. In the days of the wheat harvest, Reuben went and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother, Leah. Now, this is back to Leah's direct offspring. So Reuben brings these mandrakes in. And then Rachel, now this is where the sister conflict uh, starts. It's not start, started, it started long before this. So then Rachel says to Leah, remember, Leah was the wife of seven years service to Laban. And then Jacob had to do work for seven years and tr by trickery got Leah. And then for another seven years gets Rachel. Now Leah, has the good news is Leah, the unloved one, has already had four sons. And those are the first four of the 12 that are born uh, by four different uh, wives. But remember, Rachel is beautiful and younger, but she doesn't have any sons. So she says, Rachel says, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. So she does ask please and ask for these aphrodisiacs, probably uh, sexual enhancer kind of things. But then Leah, the sister, says, Is it a small matter that you've already taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes as well? So she says, you know, this bitterness comes out again. You've already taken my husband. Are you going to take away these, these love fruits as well? And of interest, she gives away the aphrodisiacs to get uh, loving. So Rachel said, Back to the scripture now. Rachel says, Then he may lie with you tonight in exchange for your son's mandrakes. So Rachel asks with a please if she can have the uh, aphrodisiacs. And Rachel has apparently exclusive sexual access to Jacob at this point. Uh, but it's not working. So she makes this deal. So she, so remember back in the deal that Jacob made, he exchanged a pot of stew for Esau's birth birthright and blessing. All right, verse 16. When Jacob came home for the field that evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come to me, for I have hired you with my son's mandrake. So he lay with her that night. So Leah, the, the, the older sister, says that he's been hired with the mandrakes. So Jacob apparently cooperates with this, uh, cooperates with this sister-wife conflict because they're, the, they're literally the first sister wives in the Bible. So verse 17, and God listened to Leah and she conceived and bore uh, Jacob a fifth son. And Leah said, God has given me wages because I have given my servant to, uh, to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will honor me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun which means honor. Afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Now she's going to come, two chapters from now, is going to, she's going to come into play. Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. She conceived and bore a son, 
So apparently the aphrodisiac is working. God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, saying, may the Lord add to me another son. That's what Joseph means. And she does get a final son, final of the 12, which is Benjamin coming up. All right, let's make some conclusion. Obviously, we have to take this passage, passage with some caution. Is this pros- proscriptive? That is, we should be sleeping with those who aren't your one and only wife? No, I don't think so. Should you be purchasing sexual access and availability with love fruits? No, I don't think so. I think one of the points is there's a lot of male knuckleheads in the Bible, lots of them. But for you women, don't throw rocks at the men and say, oh, the men are always just knuckleheads. Well, I think here we're also finding some knuckleheads in the women that are wrestling with God themselves. So take comfort that there are some women there there that might be even more of a knucklehead than you are. So, and I think one of the reasons God puts knuckleheads in the Bible is is for all us knuckleheads to say, oh, I can have access to the Lord. Peter's, Peter's worse than I am. And these, you know, Rachel's worse than I am. So maybe the Lord would have me as well. So I think you have access because of the knuckleheads. So that's one thing. Um, I don't think it gives you freedom and license to do anything you want. I think it gives you freedom to do the right thing as defined by him. So let's ask the Lord, what, would, what do you wish here? What is your word and what is your command? Next, I think it says that God is in this. He sees and cares and he's active. And even amid sister's dysfunction and sexual dysfunction and marriage dysfunction and family favoritism and abdication of roles, I think the Lord is in it. Finally, let's talk about zippers. I know that God cares about what these knuckleheads did with their zipper. And it's not just on this page of the Bible. It's on almost, not every page, but lots of pages. It's a big issue. Why? Well, because it's a big issue with mankind. So I'm not sure we're doing a very honorable job of stewarding these gifts. I know God cares what you, Mr. and Mrs. Knucklehead, do with your zipper. And I don't remind you of this to throw you under the bus. I remind you of this because it's true. And because of the message you might hear today is that Anything and everything with everyone means nothing and is always okay. That's the sexual message we get from our culture. And I think, no, I think the Lord cares and we should follow what he says. That's enough for today. Thanks for listening.